just kidding. Well, sort of. Um, I'm so glad that you are here and you've chosen to worship with us today. Um, here in Ridgeville, we speak life and we know that there is life and death in the power of the tongue. Amen. Amen. I am the righteousness of God. I stand in covenant with him. And through this, I have new life, new anointing, and new power. I will not worry, nor have fear. You know, there are so many people today that are paralyzed with fear. Paralyzed by it. But my God is greater as yours. Lord, your word and your spirit, they comfort me. I am increasing in your knowledge and in your wisdom. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Through your covenant, I am healthy. I am blessed. There is nothing missing and nothing broken. You have made me a blessing and everything I touch is blessed. Lord, I thank you that my family walks in obedience to your word and to your will. Take me, Lord. Take Ridgeville Church of God to the highest place in glory. Amen. Will you give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning? Amen. Good morning, church. Welcome to Ridgeville Church of God on Resurrection Sunday, 2022. Hasn't God been good to us? Because he is risen, we're here this morning. If you didn't come for that lesson that we had this morning with our life groups, you missed out a good lesson. I'd like to encourage you to make an attempt to come and come and be with us and let the Lord bless you. And I just thank God for this day that he has made. And I have already been rejoicing and I'm going to be glad in this day. And I invite you to do the same thing. And let's lift up the name of our Lord. And it's so good to see all of you here. I notice we have some guests with us. We want you to feel at home. And may the Lord bless you. And we hope that he'll bless you so much that you'll want to come back again and be with us. Now, we won't be having our evening service, but we will have a service if the Lord wills it. Wednesday night at 7 p.m. And we'd be glad to have you. Please be seated. I understand there were 43 for the sunrise service. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Thank the Lord. I could smell a lot of food had been cooked in there. Um, and again, no evening service. Women's meeting Tuesday night at 7 p.m. And the concealed weapons permit training class Saturday at 9 a.m. Casual Sunday next Sunday. Cookout following a.m. service. And door-to-door -door knocking. No p.m. service next Sunday night. Men's meeting tomorrow night, week, which will be the 25th at 7 p.m. And I'd like to invite all the men to come on out and be with us, and let's have a wonderful time. Come on out. If you haven't been coming, come on and try it. And I think that you'll like it, and we'll be glad to have you. Now, let me take your praise reports or prayer request, whichever, and you can have both. If you want to do that. I say praise report and or prayer request. So starting on my left over here, anybody at this time, just signify by lifting of your hand and I'll recognize you. Okay, how about this section here? Sister? Praise God. Amen. Yes. Sister Carter, I saw you raise your hand. Yes. Amen. Anybody? Yes, ma'am. Anybody else in that section before I move? How about this section here, sister? Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes. Any 
anybody else in that section before I move? Sister. Thank you. Amen. God is good. Anybody else before I move? Extreme right? Anybody? Brother Joey? Amen. Sister Melissa? God. We're going to keep on praying. Yes. Amen. To God be the glory. Anybody else in that section? Up on the platform? Pastor? Amen. In case... You want to make one now? You th might have thought of one. I'll give you a chance. Just signify by lifting up your hand, and I'll recognize you. If not, Brad? Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. 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 Praise God. And let me encourage you again. Let's pray for the, our leaders of this church. I passed all the way down. I say to me, and I just handled preliminaries <laughs> and things like that. But let's pray for one another. And let's pray for the entirety of the body of Christ. Jesus is coming. I'm one of those, that I believe he could come at any time. You know, I've heard he's coming ever since 1953, as far back as I can remember hearing about him and him coming. He's coming. And it could be any day now. And he said, what I say to one, I say to all, watch. And we should be watching and praying and live rejoicing, waiting for him to come because he's coming and getting us out of here. I know things look bad. But well, we serve a God that's able to raise us up above it. I refuse to worry about it. He tells us not to worry. There's nothing I can do about it myself, but I can pray to him, and he can make the changes, and he does. Would you stand, please? We serve a mighty God, one that can do anything. Let's talk to him now. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name, loving you, praising you, and magnifying your name. Thanking you for this Lord's day. This Resurrection Sunday, we just thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here and for every person that's here and everyone that's in the facility in the back. We just thank you for everything you've already done. We thank you for this lesson we had this morning, and now we thank you for the praise and worship that we're going to be doing here shortly. And we pray for a special blessing upon our praise and worship team and us together. And may we receive that that you have, and may we glorify you, Lord God. May we magnify your name. We pray that you'll bless our pastor as he brings the word this morning and anoint us that we can receive it in the way that you would have us to. Now, Lord, we thank you for every need that you've met, every prayer that you have answered. We thank you for it. And now we take all of these that were given in. We put them in your mighty hands and we're looking for positive results. And we know there's nothing too hard for you. And we are asking you to intervene in behalf of every one of them. 
And Lord, we're looking for those praise reports to come. And we thank you again for this day. Because of this day, what we celebrate today, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, we are here this morning and we thank you for that and for the freedom to be here. In Jesus' name we pray. Continue to bless, Lord. And may we lift up your wonderful name and word and in deed. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Praise God. Amen. If you'll remain standing and turn with me in the book of Romans. The book of Romans. And while you're turning, let me do say it is a joy to see so many that came out this morning. And so many of you that showed up Sunday night as we had the youth rally. And I'm excited about today. We see here in Romans 6 as we read our offertory scripture. The Bible says, now if we died with Christ, we believe we also live with him. Knowing that Christ hath been raised from the dead and dies no more, death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life that he lives, he lives to God. Now I'm going to read verse 11 and then we're going to pray. But likewise you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. We need to die to sin. Sin shouldn't control us. Jesus defeated sin. So any time that we allow sin to gain control over us, we surrender the power that God's already paid. And so I want you today, I want to just bless him. This is Easter Sunday. And let's give a thanksgiving offering. So Father, right now, we're grateful for the death that you died on the cross, that the sin that we were born into, we no longer have to live with or within. The blood that was shed on Calvary's cross was shed as a ransom that all that would ask of you to save them, they would be saved. And so here we are today, God, honoring you in the resurrection, celebrating that you are no longer dead, but you're alive forevermore. So let our worship be alive. Let our singing be alive. Let our teaching be alive. Let our preaching be alive. And let our life be a light to a lost and dying world. And God, as we give to this house today, we speak blessings in favor over it. Asking you, Lord, once again to honor that which is given. And the giver, multiply it for your kingdom's sake. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Would you come and bless the house of the Lord? Well 
Jesus, that we can serve a risen Savior. Amen.
cross the work was finished you were buried in the ground but the grave could not contain you for you wear the victor's crown
So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life. So I could be free. So I could be whole. So I could tell everyone I know you thought I was worth saving. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life. So I could be free. So I could be whole. So I can tell everyone I know Hallelujah Glory To the God who changed my life And I will praise you I'll worship you I'll give you glory Because I am free Because I am whole and I will tell everyone I know, hallelujah, glory to the God who changed my life. And I will praise you, I'll worship you, I'll give you glory, because I am free, because I am whole. thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life so I could be free, so I could be whole, so I can tell everyone I know you thought I was worth saving. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life so I could be free, so I could be whole, so I could tell everyone I know. You thought I was to die for So you sacrificed your life So I could be free So I could be whole So I could tell everyone I know Come on He's here this morning He's here this morning he thought you was worth dying for. He thought you were worthy, worthy. Let him know that you think he's worthy. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we love you. And we stand here unworthy to receive such great gift. 
But we humble ourselves and understand that we were created for you. To have fellowship. To be in the presence of God Almighty. Our sins have separated us from you. But the blood that you shed on Calvary's cross has washed away all of our sins. And we stand here, Lord, acknowledging your presence in this house. And I pray, God, that today would be a day of rejoicing. That we would give you adequate worship, adequate praise. Just right where you're at. We're no in no hurry. So God, we, we come before you as sons and daughters of the Most High. And God, there are those that are here today that they're struggling in their spirit. This is the greatest hallmark of the Christian faith today. That no matter what the enemy says to us, you're alive. You're alive. And we have the scripture to prove it. And we're going to get into that in just a moment. But God, could you strengthen the body? Could you strengthen them mentally? Strengthen us mentally and physically, spiritually. That we would become witnesses for you in a lost and dying world. Now, Lord, would you anoint what I'm about to preach? You've saturated the grounds by this praise team leading us into your presence. Now, Lord, may I water the seed. May I water the seed this morning in your name. In your name, if you have your Bibles, would you turn with me into the book of 1 Corinthians? I feel the Lord in this place. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, this is maybe a passage that you wouldn't typically see preached. Normally we would preach out of Matthew, Mark, Luke. The Gospels talking about the death, resurrection, and burial of Jesus. But this too is found, and it's found later in the Scriptures, and I want you to see something that takes place. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 12, Now if Christ is preached... That he has been raised from the dead. How do some among you say there's no resurrection? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty. And our faith is also empty. Yes, and we are found false witnesses of God. Because we have testified of God that he has raised up Christ, whom he did not raise up if fact the dead do not raise. For if the dead do not raise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. And you are still in your sins. Then also those which have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. And if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiful. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man comes death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall live. Finally in verse 23, but each one in his own order. Christ the first fruits, afterward those who are Christ at his coming. May God bless the reading of the words. You may be seated. 
You've come too late to tell me he's dead. You've come too late to tell me that the God that we worship, there is no way you can feel the presence of God Almighty. Because if somehow, even in today's service, you were to say that, I would say you don't have a relationship with God. Could I go a step further and say that there are sinners that can still recognize the presence of God? It's only those in denial. It's only those who refuse to acknowledge even the mere existence of Christ. The more that we read in the history books, the more that we begin to see as the scholars dig to disprove God, they only prove him all the more. See, today more than ever, resurrection matters. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm a little old school, so you'll have to uh, entertain me. Not that I'm going to sing to you today, but we sung songs growing up. He lives. Because he lives. I told you I wasn't going to sing and I already went to it. But because he lives, I can face tomorrow. If he didn't live, how am I ever going to make it? We've heard people say on numerous times, I don't know how I would have made it without God. I don't want to get to the end of my life and find out that there was more to God and I discounted him wanting me to grow. I'm afraid that we live in a world today that many would rather reduce their relationship with God than increase it. They allow their schedules to be full of everything else but God. Listen, I'm, I'm rejoicing. I told Brother Smoke this morning, I'm rejoicing of the 43 that we had here for service, home uh, sunrise service. But I did tell him, he's, he's right there. I said, I missed you though. Why? Because if we can't miss people, we have failed to honor God. See, God come to this earth to restore relationship with his people. We are sons and daughters of Jesus Christ, created in the image of God. And if we don't want a relationship with God, we are saying, I reject you. We're saying, I don't care. Listen, I know this is brutal in this moment, but I don't care that you died for me. I don't care that your beard was plucked out of your face for me. I don't care that 39 lashes was laced on your back. I don't care that nails went in your hands and your feet and a spear in your side. I don't care about all that. Just leave me alone. Let me live my life. I'll come to you when I'm ready. You're not promised tomorrow. We're only promised one chance one chance to come to know Christ he can stop at any moment but he loves us he cares for us and his grace and his mercy is so genuine that he knows I, I, I'm, I'm going to come back I'm making intercessions for you now I want you to learn from your mistakes don't do it again I, I, I don't want to, this blood to be trampled but so often we miss the mark the pleasures of sin is only for a season and then it's gone but what the enemy doesn't tell you and me is the consequences of sin are forever. You have to deal with the consequences of sin. Continuously, the enemy will throw it up in your face when you try to grow closer to God. Oh, do you remember what you did last night? How can you worship God when you were doing this and you were doing that? The enemy wants to tear you down. So the church shouldn't have to do it. But the church seems to have a degree in tearing people down. It is our job not to tear people down. But the Bible says to encourage those in the Lord. I want us to be an encourager. Listen, we need to preach the gospel. We're not saying sin's okay. But there is a moment in here to listen. I don't tear my kids down. I try to build them up when they make a mistake. Now, son, I hope you learned your lesson. Izzy, I hope you learned your lesson. And God is saying, I hope you've learned your lesson. But don't keep doing it. Because then it becomes a habit. See, Ernest Poole portrayed uh, his character in this novel, The Harbor. 
And as one that, who didn't believe in history, he's convinced in, in, in this past that nothing could teach us but how wrong he is. If I put my hand to a hot stove, I hope I've learned my lesson. So I've learned something from my past that I can carry to my future. But how often have we got close to God? And he's warmed our spirit and he's moved on us and he's touched us. And we've done some great things in the presence of God only to regress because we didn't feel like we were ready or I don't like where he's taken me or what I got to lose. Listen, he lost his life. What are you worried about? A job, a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Is that going to be what sustains you and keeps you out of eternity? His love is everlasting. So I've come today to tell you that it doesn't matter what the world says about today. It's not about bunnies. It ain't about the chocolate eggs, although I'll take some. Them little Cadbury chocolate milk, you know, anyway, let's, let's, let's get off of that. We'll be done, ran to Walmart real quick. It's not about hiding eggs. Here's what we know. The world commercializes sacred moments of Scripture. And the church, if we're not careful, will fall into the glorization of the event and fail to preach the gospel. I want us to be enthusiastic about serving God. So this day, this Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, listen, we know that he's not in the grave. We read the scriptures. We see all that. But Paul is addressing these people as if he was addressing us today and saying, now if we preach that he rose from the dead, how can you say he's not risen? How can you doubt the message and still believe the story? Amen. You can't do it. Paul is charging these individuals. Listen, perhaps, maybe, you need a reminder this morning that we're not here to argue to the world that whether God is alive or not, we're here to live it out. The world will one day face their own judgment. But will they look at you as whether or not they pursued God or not? Will they look at me and say, I pursued God more because I saw how he moved on your life or how he moved in the church? Or will they say, if that's religion, I don't want it. God didn't look at you nor me and say, if that's who I'm dying for, I'm not dying. He died so that he could give you and I life. The fact is that Christ died. It does not negate his love. He loved you enough that he died for you. That's the ultimate example of love. And the resurrection demonstrates this value and the meaning of the crucifixion. Why would anybody want to pay your sins? I, why would anybody walk up to Sister Chrissy and say, how much are you in debt? I want to pay it off. Now, I, I'm sure she would shout glory, hallelujah. But if somebody pays your debt off and you get right back in debt, you've learned nothing. And the problem is, when God pays our sinful debt, why do we go back into what he's delivered us from? We got to have the right relationship to where we understand the true sacrifice. Maybe your mama and daddy told you like they told me. Not your mama told me that, but my parents told me. You'll appreciate it more when you had to pay for it. But we live in an entitlement society. Now everybody's making it to heaven, but no, no, no. Everybody's not making it. The Bible says that unless a man confesses, he's not going to make heaven. And there's only one way to heaven. There's not multiple ways. There's only one. But listen, if the cross is the symbol of the love of God, what are we an example of? Are we an example that he still lives? Because look at me. I come to church. Am I excited or am I drudgery? 
Do I affect you negatively or positively? We should be infectious to glorify God that when people get around us, they can't help but get excited. They can't help but be reminded. I listen to Brad. This is the testimony of how God saves and how God delivers. If any time to testify, it's today. So why don't we? Are we afraid that we don't have the right words? He's not calculating how many words you speak, whether or not you are deemed worthy. He's not worried about your bank account, nor is he worried about mine. He's not worried about your pedigree. He Listen, he don't even care that you church of God. I don't care that you church of God. I mean, we church of God. But if you think church of God is going to get you to heaven, you're mistaken. If you think a suit is going to get you to heaven, you're mistaken. It is surrendering your life to him. And watch him do some things. And see, when he does it, there is this good news. I have good news to bring. You know that song. And that is why I sing. Because you got to sing about the glory of God. There has to be a song in you. And it ain't the newest contemporary non-Christian song. If that's the song you go to, you got problems. We have to have a song that spurs us into the presence of God. Now listen, if your favorite song is All My Exes Live in Texas, you got problems. (laughs) All right. But what's your gospel song? What's the song that gets you into the presence of God? And how often do you get into the presence of God? See, I'm reminded of this in 1 Corinthians, the great resurrection chapter here in this Bible. The main theme here is this, that resurrection occurs because God loves you. Without you, And his desire to be in a relationship with you, the cross scene would have never taken place. Could he have easily kicked Adam and Eve out of the garden and created two more people? Absolutely. But what kind of God is that? Even when he promised the children of Israel, you're going to make you a great nation and all of these, it is the leader of that nation that comes and says, God, don't kill them. Don't kill them. You'll make yourself to be untrue. Because how can you declare these are going to be a great nation and yet take them out and create something new? I'm here today to tell you the enemy has lied to us and we have bought it. We've got to get to this place. Let me hurry. Listen, if Christ is not risen, look back in your scriptures. The Bible says if Christ is not risen. Let me give it to you. Your faith is futile and you're still in sin. If Christ has not risen from the dead, let's all go home. I'll give you every key I have to this church. We'll shut the doors down. I'll refund all your money because what's the use of serving God? Because the whole essence of serving God is because he is alive and he's the only God that is alive. He's the only God that bled and died for you. He's the only God that preserves for you. He is the God that answers prayer. He's the God that makes a way where there seems to be no way. But yet somehow in the midst of everything that we hear, we can't worship him. Music's too loud. Man, it's cold in here. I don't like the way the preacher's yelling at me. I'm going home. I'm not yelling at you. Music's not too loud. It's not too cold in here. It's not the decor that's the problem of whether or not you'll worship God. It's the enemy playing in our head. Because he understands that the moment you engage God is the moment you grow. I can't be the same once I've been in the presence of God. There's something different about me. There's something that changes, but watch this. It's nothing but this majestic structure. If we believe that Christ is not risen, it's a giant fraud. Let's go home. Tricks on you, jokes on you, go home. But we know that's not true, and that's why we come to church every week. It's because we need more of the truth. See, if Christ is not risen, then Christianity is this delusion. We're crazy people. I know you're crazy. And I'm crazy. 
But we're not delusional. See, we're crazy because we like to have a good time. Today, we just joked a lot while we were cooking y'all bacon and sausage and grits and eggs and biscuits and pancakes, all for Chrissy. (laughs) And you know, she said, I ate one. We did all that. Declaring pancake Sunday for Chrissy. And she eats one. But do you know what? It only takes one confession to wipe all your sins away, to make it worthwhile. So if I cook one pancake and that's all she ate, it was worth it because now you know what? She can no longer say, y'all said y'all were going to have pancakes. Had to live that for a whole year. But the enemy would like nothing more than to use a pancake whether it's a pancake batter or biscuits or homemade, it doesn't really matter. The enemy's not concerned about the ingredients. He's concerned about the distraction. And we got to come to church and eliminate the distractions and be able to say, I am a child of God. You are a liar and he is my father. I'm going to worship him. Why? Because as I worship him, it pushes you further away. And if I can get closer to him, I'm further away from you. And I don't really like you. So why do we entertain him? Why do we give him the passenger seat and some of us is giving him the driver's seat? Now, I don't know about you. Maybe, maybe, I, maybe I'm just the odd one here, but how many of you like backseat drivers? Nobody? You don't like nobody to tell you how to drive? Me neither. So why do we allow the enemy to tell us where to go? Whose voice are we listening to? If God is directing us, then we should be growing day by day. But if we're listening to the voice of the enemy and then you wonder, why did I not feel God like I used to? It's probably because you're not driving like you used to. And if you'll grab the seat again and drive in the direction of God, your father, I promise you, you will grow. Because you know the more that you seek him, the more that you'll find him. Apostle Paul said this, if we have only been false witnesses of God, and that's what we are if we don't believe Christ is alive forevermore. If we buy the notion that the world wants you and I to believe that he's not alive, it's just a make-believe. This is just a history book. Well, last time I checked, a history book is factual. So if they want me to believe that this is nothing more than a history book, I will submit to you today, then you're agreeing that Christ is alive. Now, whether you want to argue that point or not, history has proven to be true. And one thing I know about history is history even repeats itself. Look, bell bottoms are in. I don't know when skinny jeans was ever in, but I hope that history doesn't repeat itself. But if God healed you, then history repeats itself that God can heal you. And if God died for me, then that means God has died for you. And if God has answered my prayer, then history means because the Bible says that he's no respecter of person. And so if he's answered my prayer, he's answered yours. How do we know? Look at the image. Pull the brain up. She actually has one. And in that brain is a white spot. Quite enormous. And today, she says, Pastor, I want to show you something. And it's a wee little dot. And a wee little dot it is. But the enemy would say that little dot still has significance. But I declare... That if God can take a big dot to a little dot, God can take a little dot to be no dot. But you got to believe it. You got to walk and understand that he's alive. Why do we worship a God? Why do we even pray to God? If you don't believe that God can answer your prayers, why do we waste our breath? 
I pray because I know he can answer. I have seen him respond to the petitions of our prayers. And if he has answered mine, I know he'll answer yours. But he hasn't answered it yet. Maybe he has and you're not listening. He's not obligated to answer it the way that you want it to. There were many prayers that I have prayed I wish God would have answered. But it made him no less of a God because he didn't. Matter of fact, if I was honest with myself, it made him a greater God. Because I know he has my best interest in mind. Could you imagine if God would have gave you the job that you prayed for? Could you imagine if God would have given you the boyfriend or girlfriend that you thought in middle school was your soulmate? Now listen, if you're married to your soulmate from middle school right now, I'm not talking about you, okay? Don't want to... Don't want to... But we all pray, oh, this is God. This is the one God's got for me. And four weeks later, we cry because we're dating somebody else. If you believe that that's the one that God has for you, why are you shopping around? If this is the church that you feel like God's got for you, why you leave when trouble's hard? Marriage is hard. Or either I'm just the hard one in the family. Like, in your marriage it's easy. But I can tell you, it ain't easy. But what I can tell you is that when two work together, it's easier. And when I work with God and allow God to take me to the place he wants to take me, life is easy. Now, I know you've heard that life is easy when we're up on the mountain. You're not always guaranteed to be on the mountain. There's going to be some valleys, and when the valley is here, that's when my commitment to God matters the most. I can serve God when things are going well. Oh, I ain't got a bill to pay. Life is easy. But when you ain't got no job, and groceries are running thin, and you're behind on a car payment, can you trust God? Can you still stand in the face of your enemy and say, I know that God will provide for me? That I'm going to still give my tithes because that's what I'm supposed to do and God's going to reward me for my faithfulness. I'm still going to pray when nobody else around me is praying. I'm still going to go to church when everybody tells me to lay church alone. I'm still going to do it because I need God. I'm not here for you. I'm here for him. And if you're here for him as well, guess what? We've created an atmosphere of unity that we're here to worship God. Everybody's not going to run the back of the pews. Everybody ain't going to hang the chandeliers. I ain't seen nobody in my lifetime ever hang on the chandeliers. I don't know why we preach it. But I can tell you this, that we can get excited for God again. We've lost our excitement. We've lost our zeal to want to be in the presence of God. We have no, des- n- n- no reservation when our favorite team is coming to town. Whether it's a sports team or a NASCAR, maybe it's a, y- y- you know, the craft shows coming and you make every effort to rearrange your schedule so you can attend. But do you rearrange your schedule to attend church? What's, what's the most important thing in life? Paul's addressing them and saying, listen, if Christ is not risen, everything we're doing is in vain. I'm here today to tell you he is alive, so what you're doing is not in vain. It matters. Listen, next Sunday we're, we're going to go and we're going to knock on doors and say, hey, I just want to let you know, you, you know, can we pray with you? We're the church down the street and we just here because we want to make an impact in our community. If you can't go door to door, now I know some people are physically unable, but what I'm saying, if your heart and your desire is not to be able to go and intertwine with your community, we need to close the church doors. Because otherwise, why are we here? If you're waiting on them to come into the four walls of this church to be saved, we have bought a lie from the enemy. Jesus says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. That's the world out there that needs to hear that there is a God that still saves, a God that still delivers, a God that is still loving them. And while the world paints a different picture, we as the church know otherwise. 
And I'm a testament of his love and his grace and his mercy. See, Christ is risen. And that's the foundation in which you and I declare. Look with me in verse 20 as I get ready to close. But now Christ is risen from the dead. It has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man comes death, by man also comes the resurrection of the dead. There's coming a day when the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And those that remain will meet Christ in the air. I hope and pray your relationship allows you to join him. I haven't been hearing since 1953, Jesus coming back. But about 1980, I can remember. And the enemy has painted this picture. You've heard it so often. You might as well just, they're just crazy people. But watch this. In order for scripture to be fulfilled, go to Revelations and begin to read and see how close we're there. Begin to understand that he says that he won't return until everyone has a chance to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, growing up, I thought maybe it was a radio. Thought maybe it was TV. But can I tell you right now, social media has a greater influence. This thing can be pumped into third world countries because people would rather have a phone than a car. And all they have to do is to go to Facebook and they'll begin to see the gospel being preached. We have people from Canada and other states watching. Why? Because the distance of a message is only constrained by those of the desire to hear it. And he says in his word, in the moment you think not, that's when he's coming. What, what wonderful moment it would be that if, if he would come on Easter and say, behold, it's time to give my children. And while you're sitting there eating your ham and whatever Easter meal is, and you're not thinking about Christ's return, and all of a sudden, heavens open up and here comes our King. And the dead in Christ shall rise. I want to meet my dad again. Could it be that I meet him before I ever get to heaven because the dead in Christ rise and I meet him in the air? It's my imagination, so just walk with me for a moment. But could it be that those that have died before me as they're going up and then I'm joining, maybe we're high-fiving and saying, you made it. To see my son or my brother or my father or my grandparents and know that the journey's been worth it. High five. You made it. But what tragedy it would be to see the dead in Christ go. And those that we have surrounded ourselves with that lived the gospel and we played the game to see them go up and we're left behind. That's not what God wants. He wants a relationship with you. And so with every head bowed, every eye closed, maybe this morning you would be honest with yourself and you would say, Pastor, if Christ came today, I know that I will have no opportunity when the events occur to ask for forgiveness and join. For the word says, in a twinkling of an eye, it's over. And we're either going with him or remaining behind. Maybe this morning you want to have an assurance that you will join Christ. You want him to come into your life today. I just want you to look this way and put your head right back down. Thank you. I see you. I see you. Yes, I see you. So, Father, these three, 
that look this way. Maybe there are others here under the sound of my voice. We don't want the enemy to gain a victory over there mentally. And so we pray today, Father, I confess my sins. I believe you died for me. And I believe that you've risen. Paid a price for my sin. Today, I surrender my heart. Surrender my mind and surrender my will for yours. And Father, we know that praying, the confession, the belief, and the acceptance of you as Lord and Savior over their life, sin has now been covered. And we pray for them as, as you told your disciple. You told Peter, Satan seeks you to sift you as wheat. But I prayed for you that when you fall, turn back. Encourage your brothers. And so God, we know today we all need encouragement. And there will be moments that we don't do as well as we should. But God, I'm here today as one who has fallen. And your grace and your mercy has allowed me to come back into the fold. I'm here to encourage the body. Don't give up. Seek the Lord. And as this body, God, we encourage one another. We're one big family. Lifting one another up, praying for one another. For we know the day soon will come that in heaven we'll worship together. Bless this house. Now, Father, as we go our separate ways this Easter, would you honor every family that's here, every family that's listened through social media and everyone that showed up even for sunrise service, let this be a glorious day. The attacks on the family, Lord, we speak protection over them. We pray encouragement of the mind and encouragement within their spirit, renewance in them physically that they can fight the good fight of faith and make it to the end. In Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Women, please come Tuesday. There are not very moments of time that we get to come and allow iron to sharpen iron. The ladies far out due to men. We're going we gonna to work on that. But at the end of the day, you need relationship. Ladies praying with ladies and men praying with men. Don't neglect the saking of coming together. And come Wednesday night as we do a testimony. Sister Melissa is on the schedule for this week. I want you to come. We need you here. We have youth. Brother Gene leads our youth. We have other classes that go on. So this is an opportunity to grow in your faith. So would you come and join us? God bless you. Remember, no service tonight.